Welcome to this episode of Missouri Charters Work, a podcast highlighting the charter public school experience in Missouri. I'm Doug Thayman with the Missouri Charter Public School Association, and I'll be serving as your moderator. University Academy is consistently rated as one of the top public schools in Missouri and even the nation. UA's rigorous academic program prepares students for college and life after high school. In fact, last year, every UA senior was accepted into college, even some of the Ivy League colleges, but I'll let them tell you more about that. And they received millions of dollars in scholarships, awarded for all of their outstanding work as scholars. So what is their secret? Here to talk about just that is Tony Klein, superintendent of University Academy, Clem Yukoma, upper school principal, Kelly Ransom, second grade teacher, and board chair for the University Academy Board of Directors, Katie Gersom. Welcome. Thank you. Tony, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Why don't you just give us a little bit of history and background on University Academy and and what brought University Academy into Kansas City as, as such a great performing charter school? Sure. Um, so the University Academy was founded by four individuals, um, Shirley and Barnett Helsberg, uh, Lynn Brown, who's a local activist, and Tom Block. And uh, shortly after the Helsberg family had sold Helsberg Diamonds to, um, to Berkshire Hathaway, they decided they really wanted to focus on philanthropy. And one of the things they wanted to do was offer a great educational opportunity on the Missouri side of Kansas City for public school students. Um, at the time, the, there weren't a whole lot of options um, other than a Lincoln College Prep for uh, a true college prep um, curriculum for public schools. So in 2000, the school opened, and it was a seven twelve school originally on 55th and Truce. And in 2005, we built a, the campus that we now reside on, which is on 68th and, and Holmes, and we became a, a K-12 so kindergarten through 12th grade. Yeah, kindergarten through 12th grade. We serve uh, almost uh, a little over 1,100 students. Um, and most of our students come to us in kindergarten, and they stay with us all the way through uh, uh, 12th grade. And really, that's probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, keys to our success is the consistency in the curriculum and the expectations from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. So the mission of the school, Clem, uh, it's obviously around focusing on academics and wanting to move students forward academically. What can you tell us about the mission and, and the uh, the passion behind University Academy? Yeah, the, the mission is, you know, when I came on the job, first interview, the thing that really attracted me was the clarity of the school's mission, uh, which is to prepare people, young people, to go on to college and to succeed there and then go beyond there to make con- contributions that are positive to the community. So that, when you think about it, it's really, first of all, jarring to think that it's a college prep, everybody goes to college, and we've been able to, relying on how bold that mission is to make, uh, to, to amplify it further through our own procedures. Now, you cannot graduate from University Academy Upper School unless you have four college acceptance letters uh, and there are associated things that drive that. So we've been pushing to get them ready to college and we have friends of UA, of which we'll talk about more here, that helps us out with making sure the kids get through college. It's not just going to college, you got to finish if you're going to hit the second part of that mission, which is to be able to be in a position where you're making positive contributions to society. And I know when we talk about going to college, uh, you had some exciting uh, results even last year, uh, 2018 19, with students accepted into some Ivy League schools. Can, Tony, tell me a little bit more about that. Sure. Last year was a historic year, but uh, hopefully uh, becomes more the norm going forward. We had 42 graduates. They combined for $12.5 million in, in uh, total scholarship offers. Um, and three students in particular got into really outstanding schools. So one graduate is now at Stanford. She's a freshman at Stanford. One's a freshman at Harvard. And another is a freshman at uh, Cornell, um, as well as some, some admittances to other great schools like uh, Tulane um, and Mizzou and, and, and whatnot. So we're really proud of that, that class. And um, I think they raised the bar. And now the class of 2020 you know, has to stare that down and, and try, to, try to catch them. So Kelly – Great academic performance takes great teachers providing great instruction. 
Uh, tell me a little bit about you know uh, teaching at University Academy uh, and, and just what that's meant to you and and tell me about the, the the staff culture just the feel well I think that if you spoke to any teacher that's at University Academy they would tell you that we are family um, and that's so important with the expectations um, I mean what goes into teaching kids every day you want to know that you're going into a space with people who you can do life with right it is hard being in those trenches and loving on babies and um, helping them to reach the academic goals um, and character goals um, but it makes it really easy when you actually enjoy the people that you're there with and so um, anyone can walk in and you see people who have been at our school for 10 15 years people stay we do life together we um, we build curriculum together we talk about awesome projects um, it's just a really joyful environment and that starts top down um, and, and another thing that we also, um, we talk about work-life balance a lot. And when I talk about being in the trenches, the work that we do, it requires a lot, but University Academy really takes good care of their staff. We want to be great for ourselves so that we can be great for kids. And so that's what I love most about our school. That, that's great. It's great information. And, I, you know, I think when we think about students, we know that there are, uh, students with all levels of abilities. And so, uh, you know, we have to be able to serve all of those different different levels of abilities and even students with special needs. What what can you tell me about special needs students? Does University Academy serve those students? And uh, what kinds of programs are available? Absolutely. We, we serve um, students with, with special needs. So admissions is done by lottery. So uh, you know, f- folks apply for their for their kids, and and whoever hits the lottery comes in, and we're going to meet the the student where they are when they're coming in, whether they come in to kindergarten, which is where most come in, but sometimes kids will come to us second or third, fourth grade, or so on um, as they get older. And if they have uh, a disability, you know, we have um, four full time uh, staff, a director of special ed, and, and three full time um, teachers um, that work with them. And if we don't have the resources in house, we're going to bring those in. Um, our goal is to is to have every every student, you know, uh, reach reach their goals, um, and we're going to work with them. And and certainly, you know, we follow the law and, and take advantage of all the supports that the state has to offer, which are many. And uh, I'm really actually really proud of our our track record with our uh, students with special needs that have gone off to college. They actually graduate. Um, the students that we've had since our first graduating class, in 2004. Students with disabilities have graduated from college at actually a little higher average than our average student. About 60% have actually graduated from college. So again, whether a student has a disability or not, the goals are the same for us. Um, What particular programs and careers they pursue are individual to them. But once they make up their mind, we're one behind the sales and we're going to help them get there. Clem, you have the the challenge and honor of uh, being an upper school principal, and so there's meeting state standards and making sure these students have the the credits they need to be prepared for graduation. Uh, I, I'm sure that brings a lot of challenge to it. Uh, what do you do, and how do you work with those students uh, t- to help them succeed, and then to figure out where they want to go to school or to go to college? Yeah, one one of the uh, things that happens, uh, it's the law is that every student who graduates high school has to have a transition plan taking them into what they're going to do beyond high school. Uh, We've been lucky that because we're a college uh, prep school, a lot of our students aspire toward college. Our job then is to uh, facilitate that. Uh, Tony mentioned a while ago that uh, our students have Uh, performed at par, if if not higher in some instances, than the general population. An easy way um, to gauge this is to look at the state EOC end-of-course exams. At the end of every subject, the state requires in specific areas that students take a test. Our uh, students with special needs have actually uh, hit proficient, which is what the state is looking for, uh, far more than what you would find anywhere else. So that just says to me, if you don't get into their uh, needs, you just kind of supply and provide uh, uh, scaffolding support for them to get where they need to go, that that's really what you should be doing. 
Um, you know, my metaphor for this is you look at the drivers uh, getting a driver's license. Everybody gets them for the most part, and so that's what we're doing. You know, we make sure everybody not only gets a diploma saying they graduated, but that they've learned some skills that will help them later on in life. Katie, I'm going to hop over to you. You are uh, the new chairman of the Board of Directors for University Academy. Uh, It's a public school board, big decisions to be made, a lot to uh, keep on top of as far as the performance of the school. Um, It is a volunteer position. What what drove you to say, I'm I'm willing to invest time and serve on this board and, and now to chair this board? Thank you. That's a great, great question. Um, what really impresses me about University Academy is that you can be a donor, you can be a volunteer, you can be uh, marginally involved or heavily involved with the school, but they're willing to embrace you and to take some reasonable and calculated risks with you. So my little story is that I sat down with Clem four years ago, five years ago maybe, in a room and said, Clem, I'm a volunteer, I'm a donor to UA, but I'd like to help a little bit more in a new way. And he took a chance on me and I ended up once a week being in senior seminar, which is a junior-senior class in the upper school that helps students get prepared for college, writing essays, looking at scholarships, um, helping them with their application. And from there, I got to know the students and got to know the faculty a little bit more and just the the strength and the courage and the resiliency of, of everyone at UA, which really impressed me. And Coupling that with some learning that I had done outside of UA um, throughout the nation about opportunity gaps and closing them and opening doors for students, no matter where they are or where they come from, that learning really helped me say to myself, the, the, the root of closing those, those gaps and opening doors is in education. And um, so... Uh, Bush Helsberg, who was the chair of the board for the last 12 years, uh, approached me and said, we think a transition might be in order now, so would you be willing to serve on the board and um, bring your voice to the table since you've had some experience in the classroom and you have had this donor volunteer space uh, in your wheelhouse? So sat on the board for about a year, and then Bush came back to me and said, I think it's time for you to step up and chair the board. So um, humbled and honored and completely blown away by that, by, by that invitation, but uh, think that, that the team at UA is a great team to be on, and I'm thrilled to be supporting and helping shepherd and lead the organization. That's great. And, and there are lots of ways for community to be involved at University Academy. And you know, one of the things we really like to see is parent engagement. Uh, you know, Kelly, from a teacher's perspective, what's the importance of parent engagement? And then what do you find at the school? Well, what I love about UA is, I mean, our doors are open. We have so many events that um, bring parents in. We love for them to come in to volunteer, to spend time reading with our students, um, coming to field trips. We have uh, dances and galas that bring, I mean, we really are a family unit. Um, and we know that happy families, happy teachers, it equals happy kids. And so however we can support our kids and families, um, we open up those opportunities um, all of the time for our babies. That's great. And so, you, is what, do you find Tony that you have a a high degree of parent involvement? I do. Um, it's, this isn't the only place I've ever worked, but it's the place that has the highest degree of uh, a parent involvement that I've seen. And parent involvement um, doesn't always look the same. You know, there there's the moms and dads who you're going to see in the in the school quite often, and then um, what's what I really like to track is. The moms and dads that are checking in their kids' grades, um, and which they can do, you know, on the, online, and we can see that. And uh, for each of the last, I don't know, four or five years that we've looked at it, over over eighty five percent of the parents have been checking their kids' grades regularly online. Um, so that means that they're heavily invested in how their kids are doing, and we know that there's lots of conversations happening between the parents and the teachers, and that's really where it should happen: the parents, the teachers directly, and. And I think Kelly could probably speak to to that. So I've been really happy with with uh, the parent engagement, and it's it's probably you know one of the top two or three 
reasons why UA has been as successful as it has because the parents have also taken ownership of uh, you know their lives and their family and their kids and trying to give their kids direction and support them as well. So I, I know when you walk in the door of University Academy and, and on the wall right there, all of these uh, banners of all of the colleges where former students, alumni are uh, now attending or have attended, that takes great teachers. Clem, where do you find the great teachers? We hear all the time about how hard it is to find great teachers. Oh, I, I think we've been lucky, but we have the difficulty that everybody has. Whenever the economy gets better, people go do something else that, you know, pays more money. But I always tell uh, teachers, and, and I've almost started using this, meaning can, teacher candidates, I've almost started singing this as a mantra. You can't do a good job here unless you're overqualified because the kids are that smart, the challenge challenges are that great, and and that's what it takes to get the job done. Uh, our teachers plan together because the assumption is that you're going to pick up a lot of things from your colleagues. You look around. In the upper school, we meet every week, and that helps drive that. Um, what you start to see in most research is that as students go from the lower levels into the upper levels, parent involvement seems to drop off. It's almost an inverse relationship. The higher the, the level in schooling, the lower the uh, involvement of parents. So what we've done to combat that in the upper school is that we've, we, we've turned our parent meetings into topics so when we're talking about issues like how you get money ready, how you apply to go to college, we target parents of seniors and juniors, and that seems to bring them in in droves. If we're talking about travel abroad, which is another program we have where our students go and live with families from anywhere to six or more weeks overseas in Europe, in China, in New Zealand, uh, we talk about that, and that brings parents who are interested. And I think most schools can do this, too. If you don't just say we have a PTA, it meets on such and such a day, and change pivot to saying we have a meeting discussing this topic. If you have a parent, uh, a student, if you're a parent of a student in these grades, you might be interested in that. That works. We also even do it for students coming from the eighth grade, which comes from our middle school, into the upper school, the high school. We have a transition meeting. That also brings a lot of parents in. So uh, you got to work a little harder at it because it's a, you know, we're still an urban school. Um, but if you if you put the effort in, you get the results you need. And and I'd also like to speak to I mean teacher recruitment. UA does an awesome job hiring dynamite teacher. Not only do they need to be super brilliant and super passionate about the work, but um, we like joyful folks, right, who come to work smiling. We're greeting each other in the hallways, and I, like I said before, we do life together. Um, but. From the teacher's perspective, oh, we don't like to constantly reinvent wheels, right? And so it's so great that the benchmarks are set, that um, the curriculum is already mapped out for us. That gives us the flexibility to kind of do our magic within our rooms. And that's what we love. And so I keep saying that we do life together, but we really do. We are sitting and talking about magical projects that we can create for our kids without worrying about, okay, now where do we start and where do we finish? Because the work has been done. And so when we're recruiting and we're talking to teachers about how we do life, I mean, everybody wants to work at a place where not only can they you know, do good work for the community and do good work for people's lives, but where they can also be happy for themselves. And we see that model top down. We see our leaders smiling and happy and joyful while getting the results and it trickles down and people want to be there and people stay. This is my second time coming back <laughs> to, to UA um, and I, I just call it home. So, Katie, uh, the board is ultimately the group that holds the responsibility for the school. As a board member, as a board, what are you paying attention to? As a board, we're really excited about the future. So the future is on our minds in terms of putting together a five-year strategic plan that's on our list of to-dos this year. And five years seems like a long way out, right? Because the world is changing fast every second. Um, we're getting new information from all 
angles of, of society and and politics and all of that. So five years is a good uh, launch for us, but I think every year we're going to be looking at how we can tweak, how we can be better. So one of the things that's really important to me, and, and Tony and I have talked about this a lot, and I've learned from Clem and some of the other teachers at the school, is that we have a culturally responsive point of view at our school, so that we're um, we are inclusive, we're we're um, we're open, we are providing an education for all who come in through our doors and a quality education for all. Um, again, I go back to those closing those gaps um, and opening doors. Tony, looking ahead five years, that takes resources and resources take funding. And we're at a time in 2019, 2020, when uh, we see public school dollars continually decreasing for charter schools. Uh, what what's the impact what of of that kind of a scenario for a university academy that's a really uh real impact unfortunately so uh we're we're down um we we have about a 14.5 million dollar annual budget and our revenues are down almost half a million dollars from where they were just a couple years ago and so we spent all this time you know 19 years building this this thing up to um the accolades of the class of 2019 that I that I shared with you and uh, we had to make a decision this year, like, do we, do we scale back some of these things? Um, or uh, do we try to fundraise our way out of it? Or do we pursue a legislative fix? And, and really what, um, what wound up happening is the board stepped up. Um, and they said, look, we, we spent 19 years going, building to this point, we're not taking a step back. And uh, uh, the Hellsberg family issued a challenge grant. Um, they'll match dollar for dollar. Um, up to six hundred thousand dollars, and so far in the last few months, we've raised about three hundred fifty thousand. So we have, I got a little more work to do, <laughs> but um, how powerful is it when a, when a board steps up and says, "I'll match"? Uh, they're not going to let it sink. And what we're trying to do, quite honestly, um, Doug, is, is buy a little time um, so that we can figure out a common sense solution to this funding inequity uh, that exists between the traditional school district and the charter schools to the tune of about eleven hundred dollars per student. Um, I, this law that was that, that created this inequity uh, was was written uh, 15 years ago. This was an unintended consequence. Nobody ever meant for there to be an inequity, but public funding is complicated, and there's formulas involved. And we just happen to be in this situation. I, and I feel like we have uh, we have a real good chance of working with the district and figuring this out and, uh, and and creating something that's fair for all students in Kansas City. But until that time comes, I do have to watch every dollar. Um, and we are being propped up by the support of Kansas Cityans, and we are so thankful for that. Um, and uh, we're, we're all going to need it. And and UA is not in that in in the only one in that boat. So if there's other charter schools out there that listeners may be familiar with, um, we all need we all need support. And schools like University Academy, this public school gem in in the heart of Kansas City, is. Are, are schools that we need to protect and we need to support. I uh, want to thank you for joining us today and sharing such great information about such a great charter public school, our friends from University Academy. And so this concludes our, uh, our podcast today, and we want to thank you for joining Missouri Charters Work. Thank, thank you. you.